So Vulcan Road, she's about to start her takeoff. There's the hull. designed to carry the British nuclear deterrent. Of course, the Navy took over that role later on. used to do a complete role in her. We're not allowed to do that these days, but as you can see, she can still turn a pretty manoeuvre. Bomb doors open. You see that enormous bomb bay underneath. That is the bomb bay that carries, carries 21 1,000-pound bombs all the way to the Portland Islands in the longest bombing raid in history. Uh, flown by the captain was then Flight Lieutenant Martin Withers, who was awarded the DFC for that, and they dropped 21 1,000 pound bombs on the runway at Port Stanley with the help of 11 tankers to get them there. It was an extraordinary occasion. Because Falcon had stopped being a nuclear bomber by then, she was right at the end of her service operational time, uh, and she was then a low level tactical bomber. doors closing as she comes by for the second time. service in 1993 nobody thought we'd ever see a Vulcan flying again but it was only because of an amazing effort ever since by what has become the Vulcan to the Sky Trust uh, that she has been enabled to be with us now it's cost more than 10 million pounds 
and it's still costing £2 million a year to keep her going. And we've had help from the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, we've had help from a lot of the British aerospace industry, also the Civil Aviation Authority, Marshall, the Engineering Authority. But most of the money has come from you, from the great British people. You've given your money in amounts between one pound and tens of thousands of pounds to enable... again not quite as marked as on the takeoff run with that wonderful howl and as she gets up to the top there Kev Rumens has put the wheels down and I think he'll come by in front of us again with the wheels down and then he'll come in to land so as I was saying it's costing two million pounds a year to run this extraordinary airplane she is unique there will never be another aircraft flying like her and it's amazing to think that there's a piece of paper still in existence dating from 1946 when the great Roy Chadwick, who designed the Lancaster and seen it fly only five years before, sketched out the first Falcon. And what's even more extraordinary is if you elongate his picture of the first Falcon, you see that it becomes recognizably Concorde. So she is a direct uh, antecedent of Concorde. And of course, Concorde had a little engines too, although rather uh, more developed than these. So, if you want to see this aircraft again, please do keep supporting her. Join the Balkan for the Sky Club. Balkan for the Sky is the website. But please also go down to the Balkan Village. It's off to the right hand end in the Cold War display area. You'll see it there, not very far from where the aeroplane is parked. Uh, so please do go down there. All sorts of good things to do down there. And you can uh, buy all sorts of merchandise. You can try the Balkan simulator, uh, which is always good fun. aerospace industry and I omitted to name some of our very helpful people, some of our sponsors yesterday, so I got into trouble for that. Uh, amongst them, Sir Jack Haywood, a great rumbunctious generosity of Eddie Forrester of Aerobytes, but companies, uh, AD Holdings, BAE Systems, EADS, Goodrich, Judd Power, Kearsley Airways, Megit, Messier Doughty, Rolls-Royce and Serco. And we really do appreciate that. Also, if you want to give money uh, directly, you can do it from your mobile. You text VULC12, VULC12 for this year, and one more figure, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 10, and that is the number of pounds you want to give. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 10. So if you want to give three pounds, you text VULC123 to the number 770, 70070. And all of that money goes to the Balkan to the Sky Trust, uh, and you will also be charged your standard text charge on your mobile bill. So B U L C one two three, if that's what you want to contribute to, seven hundred seventy, and you will get a big thank you from us as well. So you could do that right now. Here she is coming into land on this ten thousand foot runway. I don't believe she will use her braking chute. And I think we'll see Kev Rumins holding the nose up as she goes by. So that great slab of a wing slows the aeroplane down. You see the air brake sticking out top and bottom of the wing there. He's keeping, she's actually steady the nose a little higher. And finally he lets it drop. The two nose wheels come down, all 18 wheels that back down on the runway here at Fairfield at the Royal International Air Station. And I can't tell you how happy I am to see that happen today because it's been a long few weeks while she was having her engines changed. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have.
Good morning, we are back. The Republic of Korea Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Black Eagle, the first overseas visit in the entire history of us. We welcome all of you again visiting the Royal International Air Tattoo, and it is such an honor to have our display performing right in front of you. Take off on the right side on your runway after receiving full clearance from the power jet. Break the silence right away. Black Eagle, break now!